I hadn't talked about the values of the buy-in burn, what it does for pumping value into the system and how much it speaks. And it's like my main thing that brought me into the whole ecosystem on top of the way Richard Hart conducts business, like not the Gucci side of things, but like how he builds a really good environment and does like really smart marketing and has really good values for, uh, you know, capitalists. So, but Paul Sachs, the buy-in burn, like when I was doing that math, it was never meant to actually be a price prediction model. All it was was... A what if game because like Richard Hart hated that, so I called it the what if game. I'm like, I'll play it since you don't want to. Like, and let's throw all the worst thing we can at a buy and burn model. And the worst things I threw at it, the better it did. And uh, like that really excites me. The idea that uh, like a stock has valuations, how much revenue they make, and how quickly they can buy up their market cap. Is it really worth the market cap that's been inflated through the price? That's kind of a logic for traders and it's not existed in crypto but with businesses that really produce revenue like dexes and uh auction houses for nfts you know like uh nft marketplaces sorry but with that kind of tokenomic system going on you end up with uh, a guaranteed buyer in the system where the revenue from the business is still being put into a pool to reward the investors and never being taken back out by the zed business you're forgetting something Stealing some value from the token that they like, buying PulseX for other community members who hold PulseX, and then burning it, okay? So buying the price up. So that value is coming from other people's tokens. So let's say there's the fee that people don't normally pay to do a transaction on Uniswap, and there's no buy and burn. But then they know they go to PulseX, and they have to pay an extra little bit that doesn't do them any good personally. It's only going to benefit other people, and those are the PulseX holders. But uh, I looked at the total supply and then the actual burn rate as the buys were done. So, I mean, the rate as the price goes up, obviously, the rate of burn slows down, which I like. And, uh, I mean, obviously, as people hit price points, if it's just more attractive sooner, they dump more faster, and the price is overall the same, just more is burnt out of the system faster, which means longer down the line, there will be less people available to sell. And I do believe, like, it kind of can overinflate the system long term. It's not maybe great for, like, decades of sustainability. But in the world of crypto and it moving so fast and chains seem to almost get obsolete for speed within, you know, years, like, I really just... I don't know, I just, there's something I really appreciate about it. I do get the kind of spite out of it, like the tax to the other cryptos. It is spread out, so like the amplification to Pulse X, all of it goes to one. It only goes out a little bit to the rest. But I see it as a little bit of a spite back to you for uh, Ethereum having higher gas fees on Hex and lower for everyone else. First thought, if you are the one transacting on PulseX and you're also a PulseX holder, you're not gaining anything at all because you're dumping just a little bit of your token that you were trading and you're spreading that wealth in the form of a buy of PulseX across thousands of other people. So the value that you held all to yourself just got spread across lots of other people. So if you're the one transacting on PulseX and you are you have a different token chain link or whatever and you're the one buying or selling that uh you're actually screwing yourself okay you're taking value out of your trade and you're giving it to a whole bunch of other people and spreading it around Um, i see if you're a pulse x holder and you don't do any swaps and you just let everyone else do swaps well then you're just eating all their you're reaping the rewards of that realistically nobody gives a shit about the total supply they don't care nobody cares not one single bit. You can so your your argument of like taking things out of the circulation and changing the total quantity. When in the world has anybody cared what the total supply ever is? Nobody's ever cared for Safe Moon. Safe Moon had gazillions of tokens, and nobody cared. People just bought. I do get that, but I mean, again, like it depends on how the burn is done. Like the buy happening before the burn happens, eventually. It, the system has to run out of sellers and as long as and this is not important for like the use of Paul Sex, like as long as trading happens at the DEX, as long as that DEX makes fees, someone will always be buying that token to move the price up. When you're moving the price up first and you're putting that money in the liquidity pool, well, I mean, if everyone keeps selling to price points, eventually there's no more tokens to sell, which then is too because there's no one to reap the rewards, but 
eventually the system will keep buying into that liquidity pool and essentially the value of that token has to increase if there's always right. a buyer. But, but again, you have, to assume, but you have to assume that there's not people immediately selling using that as exit liquidity. If everybody who ever holds Polifax just sits and does nothing and holds forever, cool. Buys and burns will make the price go up. But again, as the price goes up faster than it normally would have, you're just going to have sellers faster than you normally would have. I agree with that in the short term. Like, I really do. It's just like I look longer and longer. Like, I'm willing to look 10 years out, 15 years out, when where the sellers, find, like, where do they finally run out and the diamonds are truly there and the price really starts inflating. Is Paul's chain still doing so much traffic, so much volume that the DEX is still peaking? I don't know, but like I like the possibilities. Something we really have to look closely at in the Haunted strategy too, because the Haunted strategy is pr pretty much a buy and lock up. Oh, it's just going to be constant buy pressure for Pulse and the price is just going to go up and up and up. But if the price is going up and up and up, uh, that means the people not in the system, not in liquid loans, are just going to sell faster. Actually, the longer this protocol exists, then you could say it, it would start to have really, really positive effects on the price of Pulse. Because there's just less and less people to sell into uh, what we're doing.